In this video, we're going to put an active heat sink on our M.2 NVMe drive. Because that's got to be better, right? Or is it? The results might actually surprise you. Stick around and check it out. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, this time around we're going to look at a heat sink for an M.2 NVMe and we're going to find out if, if one is really necessary and whether it makes any kind of a difference or not. Now a few months ago I did a video uh, that you may or may not see. If you haven't seen it you can click up here on the little card uh, to go check that out. Uh, but it, it walks you through how to install an M.2 NVMe drive, this particular uh, Samsung 970 Evo Plus. Uh, and I had a, a, a viewer comment just a few days ago, a guy named Peter Werner, uh, commented that um, perhaps I wasn't seeing the performance that I had expected to see or had hoped to see uh, when I was doing 4K rendering off this drive because the rendering process probably generates a substantial amount of heat in this M.2 drive. And without a heat sink, uh, the heat would cause the performance throttling and that I would not get the performance benefit that I might have otherwise gotten. So. Uh, I, I did a little research uh, and I read and found an article that seemed to corroborate what he was saying. And, uh, and so I thought, well, let's just check it out and find out. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a, a baseline comparison and we're going to run, I think uh, we're going to re-render one of my 4K videos. It's about 37 minutes long. We'll find out uh, how long that takes to render uh, without the heat sink. And while we're doing that, we'll also use a diagnostic uh, utility that both Peter and the article that I read referred to uh, that will allow me to monitor the uh, temperature of this drive. And so this, this heat sink, uh, there's two ways to do this. There's uh, several uh, heat sinks on the market, quite a few of them actually, but there's two basic types. There's active and there's passive cooling. Uh, active cooling is the kind with a built-in fan that's powered by um, your, you know, your hard drive SATA connector. Um, and that's what I have here. Now, this thing's still under 20 bucks for an active cooling heat sink. Now for under $10, you can buy one that has no fan and, and it's just basically the aluminum heat sink with some thermal uh, adhesive to attach to it. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna take a baseline on that render, find out how long it takes to render without the heat sink, and then I'm going to install the heat sink on the M.2 drive and we're gonna rerun the render exactly the same project and see if there's any difference in rendering time uh, and also what kind of temperature improvement we can find. Because temperature can not only supposedly impact your performance, uh, but it can also impact your, um, your product lifespan on the M.2 drive. And these things, as you know, they're not super cheap, so we'd like them to last as long as possible. So we'll see if the heat sink can give us an improvement in that area. So let's go check it out and get our baseline on the rendering without the heat sink. All right. I just completed the render on this uh, approximately 37 minute video and I rendered it in 4K resolution and you can see down here on the bottom the time elapsed was 49 minutes and 23 seconds. Now this was without the heat sink and the temperature of note here, as you can see here on the maximum, I, I topped out at 79 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty hot. Uh, and a 37 minute video, we'll start 37 minutes, 10 seconds, uh, took 49 minutes and 23 seconds to render. So let's go do the install of the heatsink and rerun this test and see what we get. All right, we've got the SSD drive out of the computer. As you can see, there's a label on the front and the back. And from what I understand, this label has some mild heatsink capabilities. Uh, but since we're going to be applying a heatsink over top, we do need to remove any of these labels that are currently on there. So we're going to do that in a second. But let's take a look at what we get in this particular active cooling heat sink. So the heat sink itself is this aluminum veined top part with an integrated fan. And we connect that power lead into the same thing we you know, power your uh, hard drives and, uh, and things with. And there's two pieces here, it looks like. So there is a uh, bottom piece. And we need to use these two thermal strips here. Uh, I think, I believe, this one goes on the bottom. Now this particular kit, which uh, I will leave a, uh, a link in the, in the description below, um, but it doesn't come with any instructions. So you kind of have to do your homework if you buy this particular kit. Uh, so essentially, you, you to remove an adhesive strip on this guy uh, and you set it on the, uh, 
the bottom plate, you put your SSD on top and you sort of line up the notches there. And then you apply the top strip to the top of the SSD. And then of course you cap it off with the actual heat sink on top of that. Then you use the included uh, little screws here to button it all up. Now in the meantime, to prep the SSD drive, we're supposed to use these wipes. They have a wet one and a dry one. So we'll clean it up uh, and then dry it off once we remove the labels. All right, now that we got our labels removed, let's go ahead and clean this thing up. Let's make sure that's totally dry. So that looks totally dry. So we're good with the cleanup prep. Now, the next step would be to put the base strip down on the bottom bracket. Yeah, so the one thing you wanna really take care of is to make sure that neither the thermal strip uh, nor the metal part of the um, bottom uh, bracket there, the bottom tray, extends too far down. You don't want to interfere with the, the ability to make those contacts make a nice connection. So let's drop this guy down into here. We're pretty much going to line up a little notch at the top, but that makes sure that I've got a clear shot. I'm not um, interfering with the, uh, the threads of the secure screw. So now let's put on the next strip so we're going to put that on there again, taking care not to cover up our notch. There. So we want to put the fan to the end away from the contacts. And you notice there's little notches here on the end of the top heat sink. So those will go up to the end. We kind of press that down. And you'll see on the sides now we can see our three little mounting holes to secure that. Let's go ahead and put our screws in here. This particular kit does come with a little Phillips head screwdriver. It's kind of nice. I don't, I don't know who doesn't have a small Phillips head screwdriver laying around, but the fact that you don't have to go hunting for tools is always a plus. So, all right, so we got our SSD drive on there. Time to find out if uh, I left enough clearance for this thing to fit. And I can see that top layer there is hanging over my notch just a hair, but I think I can still make that work. Shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, and then we'll attach the power, and then we'll go see how this thing performs. So let's go put this in the computer. All right, got the computer open. We've got our SSD drive. This is our socket down here that we installed it in originally. So time to find out if it actually fits in there. Should be a relatively simple insert and snap. Cool. It does insert in there just fine. Before I cinch it down, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the little cable tie. All right. Now, to put the, uh, the screw in. All right, I'm gonna put a, like a little sticky compound on the top of this standoff because I just do not have the fingers to hold this in place. That'll keep it in my little socket there and hopefully allow me to get this into the uh, secure hole. There we go. So that was tricky, but uh, <laughs> got the job done. All right, I kept dropping it in there and I was desperate to figure out how I was gonna get that screw to line up. A little bit harder with the extra thickness of the heat sink on there to, to do that. All right, so now we need to put this uh, power connector into our power supply. So as you can see on my uh, SSD drive, my SATA SSD drive, I've got this uh, daisy chain uh, power connector in the in line here. So I'm just going to use that one. So I'm going to bring this connector over so I can keep you uh, so you can see what I'm doing and just thread it under there. And one thing, there appears to be a little key notch on here. This is actually not a notch. There's just a, a white, um, like a white contact. And I'm assuming that's supposed to line up with the single vertical notch that you normally see on the female end of these power connectors. So we shall see if that actually fits. All right, so now that, since that is threaded underneath these cables, it really shouldn't pop up, it should be fine. I just wanna make sure I don't put any pressure on that. So hopefully that will get the job done. Cool, so let's button this up, power it up, 
and we will rerun the test. All right, we just completed the rendering of the same video, 37 minutes, 10 seconds, in 4K, and this time the time elapsed is 49 minutes, 35 seconds. So not really the number I was expecting. But let's take a look at the temperature. The maximum temperature during the course of the render was only 59 degrees Celsius. So that's 20 degrees Celsius cooler than the maximum temperature we reached without the heat sink. So let's talk about what all this means. Well, I hope you found that helpful. It was quite enlightening to me and the results were not at all what I expected. Uh, well, they were partially what I expected. So but let's, let's talk about what this means, actually. I actually did some digging to try to explain what I was seeing. Let's take a look at the slide. So as you can see, without the heat sink, we had a maximum temperature of 79 degrees Celsius and a 4K rendering time of 49 minutes, 23 seconds. But after adding the active heat sink with a cooling fan integrated, temperature dropped by 25% to 59 degrees Celsius, but render time actually went up by 12 seconds. So why is that? So it turns out that NAND technology, the memory technology that underlies this, uh, these SSD drives, uh, the way it works, there's actually um, two sort of competing characteristics to this technology that are affected by temperature. And one of those is data retention. And you can think of data retention as, as relating to overall life of the drive. Uh, each individual cell's ability to retain data starts to degrade over time. And this is affected by temperature in that retention improves at lower temperatures. So by controlling the high temperature performance uh, and, and reducing that high, those peak temperatures for extended read and write times like you're doing when you're rendering video, if you can keep that lower, you will ultimately extend the life of your SSD drive. Now, I don't know that it makes a tremendous difference, uh, but, so theoretically anyway, lower temperatures will give you better life than high temperatures on your SSD drives. Now, conflicting with that, or sort of in the inverse of that, is high temperatures actually will give you somewhat better performance. And the reason for this is the process of programming the NAND cell is less stressful to the mechanisms when you're doing it at higher temperatures. And since that process is less stressful, the bit error rate is lower. And when the bit error rate is lower, your performance tends to actually increase slightly. So that explains why we had an actual uh, slightly better performance when the drive was actually hotter. Now, here's the thing. The performance gain I got with the drive running hotter was pretty nominal. It was only 12 seconds faster than with the heat sink. So is it more important to you, as a matter of priority, that your drive last a little longer, or is it more important that it be just a little bit faster? And you might also take into account that uh, having heat generally, extra heat in your, in your uh, computer case, is probably not great because it affects other components. So your CPU might tend to run a little bit hotter, your, uh, your GPU might run hotter. So there is this sort of um, collateral damage, if you will, uh, when you know, other components are running hotter than they might otherwise. So you really kind of have to weigh all of this. It's not nearly as cut and dry as people like to often claim. You will not get necessarily better performance simply by lowering the temperature. And in fact, you might actually get slightly less performance. So in conclusion, for me anyway, my priority would be since the performance gain running it at higher temperatures is so small, I actually think there's more to be gained by extending the life of the SSD drive and running it cooler. I'll take that 25% temperature reduction. And in the process, hopefully I'm also causing less stress on the other components in my computer. So, you know, your mileage may vary on this, on how much benefit you get out of this. It all really depends on how, much, how well ventilated your computer is also. So there's a lot of variables involved here. And if you're not doing extensive sort of uh, extended duration read and writes, there may be no really compel compelling reason to put a heat sink on, on your uh, SSD drive at all. So, uh, but if you are doing video rendering, then um, it actually might make sense, but not from a performance standpoint, just from a standpoint of extending the life of your investment. So I hope that helps you. Uh, feel free to, to press that like button and uh, subscribe if you want some more content like this. 
and uh, we hope to see you in the next one. Have fun out there.